Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back to our series on the Elixir programming language. We're going to continue on our talk about data structures by talking about structs. Now, structs are specialized maps that only use atoms as keys. But as you can see, sorry, as you will see, they are extremely powerful and you'll find out why people tend to use them throughout Elixir. So let's go ahead and let's get started. As I said before, structs are actually maps and the difference between a, there's two differences between a struct and a map, a regular map in Elixir. A map can use different types of data for the key, but structs can only use atoms for the keys. And another difference is that a struct has a special key, which is an atom of underscore, underscore, struct, underscore, underscore, and then pointing to another atom, which is the module name of that struct. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you that later, but I just want you to know that because you have a map with atoms as keys, it doesn't automatically make it a struct. You still need to actually have a special key of struct. And the reason that people use structs so much is that it gives you certain compile time guarantees. And I can also show you that uh, as we go on. And now back to showing some more powerful features. Because structs are maps, you can also easily pattern match on the type of struct. That's because it has that underscore, underscore, struct, underscore, underscore key on it. What happens is behind the scenes, you're actually pattern matching on that key, and then you're pattern matching on the value that that points to, which is just the module name, which in turn is the type of struct it is. And as I said before, keys must, must, must be atoms for them to be considered a struct. Now, although structs are maps, you actually cannot add keys to them, which is why you have compile time guarantees using structs, because you define them at compile time. And as I have also alluded to before, structs must be defined inside of a module. Therefore, the struct type will actually use that module's name. And because a struct is a map, you can actually use most of the functions for maps on a struct. Also, there is a nice little uh, module attribute that I will show you which will actually enforce that you cannot create structs without specifically telling, uh, specifically giving values to certain keys. So say that you're creating a person struct, which we will do, and we're gonna guarantee that uh, a person has a first and last name. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started. Great, now that we're here, I'm gonna show you uh, how to create a struct. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our project, open up our Elixir series, and we're going to create a person struct by making a new file. And we're going to call it person.ex, define a module, and this one is going to be called, so we're going to use the uh, style that you would normally use. So our project is called Elixir series and we're creating a person struct. Now to define a struct, um, we're going to use the def struct keyword and we create a list. And this person will just going to have a first name and a last name. Let's go ahead and let's check that out. So now we have access to creating a struct. 
and you'll see that there is a first name and last name here. And like I said before, we can actually pattern match. Um, and what we can do is we can actually create a function. And we can give it a, it's a greeting function. And we can pattern match on the Elixir uh, series. Sorry, Elixir series dot person struct. And we know it has a first name. We can pattern match on that. And then what we can do is we can greet that person, hello, first name, last name. A nice little trick that I picked up is that we can actually reload this struct without closing our current session. So if we use the R keyword, this will reload that struct. And now what we can do is we can take our person, set it to a value, and then we can call the greeting function because it's just a module, right? We can pass in that person. But as you can see, this is not very good, okay? We want to guarantee that there's a first name and a last name. So what we can do, we can use this module attribute. When you see an at symbol in here, this is a module attribute. And there's one called enforce keys. And you give it a list of keys, which you want to enforce there's a value. And I'll show you what happens. So if I try to, first I need to, I need to reload to get this enforce keys there. Then I can try to create that. And you can see this will prevent us from doing that. We want to specifically give this a first and last name. Okay. So now what we can do is we can set first name to be Joe, last name to be Smith. And you see we have a guaranteed first and last name. And now we can actually give a greeting to this guy. Okay. And it's really quite amazing that we can guarantee that this uh, will actually be this. So to prove to you that this will work, right, is we can take a um, we can take a map. Remember, we need to have the first name. So we can say Betty, last name, White. And then we can also try to call that. And it should fail because we are pattern matching only on that struct. And that doesn't work because it needs to be a struct with this as the key. So this is a nice introduction to, um, to our series on maps and structs. And I may go back to this and expand a little bit more. Uh, let me know if this isn't clear. And I, would, I have no problem with showing you guys something. Um, there's one more thing I would also would like to show you is because we're inside of this module and if I change this module name to something else it would make it you know complicated right every single time I call this I'll have to change it to make it easier there's a special keyword called module with double underscore at the beginning and double underscore at the end which says in the current module that I'm in, this is what this means inside the current module that I'm in. So if I reload this, 
That will work just fine. As you can see, it pattern matches. And that way, if I ever decide to change this, this will automatically uh, be synced with that. So this concludes our introduction to structs in Elixir. I'm Alan from Plangora. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.